Welcome back. Monday, January 18th, we're honoring the life and legacy of Martin Luther King Jr. Joining me now to talk about the global human rights leader is his son and American human rights advocate, Martin Luther King III. Good morning, sir. Good morning. So obviously this is a day many of us know as a day of service and you know in, in going over some of the notes uh, you sent over last night it, it, it made the point because you say that Americans need to stop idolizing Martin Luther King Jr. and as his son can you explain why, why you think that's so important? Well there's, there's nothing wrong with idolizing it has its appropriate place. But historically, what happens is when we idolize individuals, we often it's it's almost like we put it your you up on a shelf, and when the holiday comes out, we bring it out. It's an ornament. You look up to it. But the goal is really not to idolize, but to embrace the ideals, uh, to create a more just and humane society, and especially at this particular point in the history of our nation, we've never experienced uh, what we've experienced over the last uh, few weeks. Uh, as it relates to our government, the United States government, people coming and, uh, you know, attempting to take over the government. I mean, th this is this is not the democratic, historical democratic way that we've known in our country. Uh, so there's something clearly uh, wrong that we as a society have to figure out how to correct. And I think the principles and values that my father espoused uh, of freedom, justice, equality for all humankind, that's what I would hope that we can learn to, to embrace, learn how to engage, learn how to disagree without being disagreeable. Uh, he taught us that because he didn't agree with everything that happened, but he also understood how you could disagree without being disagreeable. And that doesn't mean to come and attack your government. Right. He often talked about nonviolence and uh, being successful in that and using nonviolence as a tool. And, and that's something hard, I think, um, you know, when there's anger and there's so much emotion. But to, to think of nonviolence as a tool, because, you know, he said our choice is nonviolence or non-existence in a sense. And and that's an important message. There, there's no question. Uh, and unfortunately, that message is so true and pre prevalent right at this moment. Uh, he did he did talk about nonviolence and non-existence. And uh, I think when you have uh, the kind of levels of threats, the high levels, co cooler heads prevail. We know that as human beings. Somehow we have to create that coolness so that we can prevail. Otherwise, we will destroy ourselves. It's like the old adage, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. Well, if we embrace that philosophy, most of us would be without eyes or teeth. So obviously there's a higher level of human existence that we must embrace from a civil standpoint. And again, it doesn't mean that we have to agree with everything that any of us do. I mean, we, 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 we have to find ways to coexist because we've done it before. Uh, what is the difference at this particular uh, juncture? Right, and it really, you know, is a, is a promotion of, of equal rights for everyone, regardless of, of, of background. And so that's that interconnectedness that should be more of a focus. And we often talk about uh, MLK Day as a day of service. How do you spend the day and how do you think Americans uh, should, should view that? So I think we should always uh, be engaged in service. How I spend the day uh, generally is, is, is often different. Um, historically, I'm in Washington uh, for the last three years. We mm -hmm. lay a reef at the King Memorial. Uh, we are involved in a service project or two, sometimes working with uh, homeless shelters, uh, providing uh, feeding uh, to the community. Uh, and then there are other programs that I attend throughout the day. But during the entire weekend, I would hope that Americans are engaged in service projects. You know, usually we, uh, millions of Americans during the King holiday weekend are involved in all kinds of activities. Um, and uh, that, is, that is really what the goal is. Uh, this year perhaps will be slightly different just because we're, we're at an unusual juncture and none of us know we cannot predict what 
uh, may happen, but we hopefully must embrace the good, uh, the good and, 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 and righteousness and justice in humankind. Uh, and that's what we have to strive for in a time where people are at each other's necks. Yeah, and and now more than ever do we need it, boy. Uh, you you have spent uh, your life living this message, being a global rights advocate, but you're also a chairman of the Drum Major Institute. Would you like to talk about that for a moment? Certainly. Um, that organization is an organization that my father actually uh, founded back in 6061 with one of his lawyers. Um, and uh, we are, I've been working on this board and now I'm the chair of it uh, for a number of years uh, to deal with, with, with global issues of peace, justice, and equity. Um, so how do we create a more just and humane nation and world and society? Uh, so uh, as the, the chair of the organization, uh, we have a, a very uh, uh, diverse board of, of persons and uh, our, our quest is to create a better nation and world uh, using the techniques of, of peace, uh, justice, and equity. Well, uh, we, we certainly need it now, uh, and definitely a, a time for healing uh, soon, and hopefully everybody remembers uh, the words of your father, the words that you've helped uh, spread throughout uh, our country and the world uh, on this MLK Day and forward. So thank you so much for your time, sir. Certainly appreciate it. Thank you for the opportunity. Take care. Be well. well